Hello and welcome to part two in our three-part series on creating a project in Cap Server 5. So in part two, we're going to create a device, and the device just represents the hardware that you're going to be talking to on that channel. You can have multiple devices under a channel, or you can have multiple channels with one device under each channel. So to add the device, we can click on the prompt to add device, or we can go to edit devices, new device, or we can use the button menu and click on the new device button. This opens the new device wizard. The first page of that wizard is the device name. Now like the channel, the device name can be 256 characters and you want to use caution in how long it is so that you are sure that you can use it in your client application. You also want to make sure that it's recognizable so that at a later date when you go back and look at this project, you know what the device was for. We're going to use the default name of device 1 and click next. The next page is for the device model. Now, device models, uh, different drivers use the model in a different way. In some uh, drivers, the model was there when the driver was first written just to show the different devices that could be conversed with. And you'll see an open model that's associated with them as well. You can usually use the open model when it's there because there's no special mapping that's done in the device. For other drivers, there's special mapping that's done, so you have to select a specific model, and Kepware will add new models as they come out. Uh, in some drivers, like the Modbus driver, Modbus is so flexible a protocol that manufacturers have tweaked it in hundreds of ways. And we've actually added a few models to specifically address specific ways to uh, communicate with those devices. So we're going to use the Modbus model because I'm talking to a Modbus device. So I'm going to leave that selected and I'm going to click Next. The device ID for Ethernet devices, this is going to be the Ethernet IP address. Uh, for serial devices, this would be the serial device ID. Now, the, in the Modbus Ethernet uh, driver, we have the ability to go through Modbus Ethernet to serial gateways and that is what the fifth octet number is on uh, this IP address. Um, the Modbus Ethernet driver also allows us to use a host name rather than uh, an IP address. So you, if you have devices that is defined by a host name and it's using DHCP, you can just use that host name and the server on the network will uh, resolve that name to an IP address to stay connected. So I'm going to enter the IP address of the device that I'm going to connect to. So you'll notice that there's I used the fifth octet, I set it to one. And that's because I'm bridging through to a device that's a serial device, and that device's ID number is one. The IP address of my gateway is 10.10.50.4. So now I'm going to click next and this brings up the timing page. Now timing is specific to the devices you're talking to, what kind of ladder is running in them, and the distance and how you're connecting to them, you know, the pathway. So connection timeout is specific to Ethernet drivers and bus drivers, uh, and not the kind that's driving the yellow red, the yellow school bus. Uh, for bus drivers and Ethernet drivers, we specify the amount of time we're going to wait to establish a connection to that device before we time out on it and move on. Now, that doesn't mean that we're never going to try to connect to the device again. It just means that we're going to fail it for this cycle and then reattempt at a later time. Request timeout is the amount of time we're going to wait for a specific data request to be returned before we time it out. Now this is done obviously after connection to the device. The default is 1000 milliseconds and for Ethernet devices you can usually set that down fairly fast maybe to 300 milliseconds or 400 milliseconds. So that allows us to time out faster. The fail after is the number of times we want a request to fail before we completely fail it and move on to the next request. So the default is three. That means if I'm requesting Modbus address 4001 from a device, I'm going to request it three times before I say, yeah, I'm not getting it, I'm going to move on. 
the last setting is the inner request delay and this is uh, specifically there for when we're connecting through things like radio modems. Radio modems need the opportunity to switch between transmit and receive or receive back to transmit um, and the way the drivers in Kepler are designed they move very fast and as soon as you get a response from a request if there's an extra, another request waiting to go it's going to go immediately um, radio modems typically need a millisecond or two to, to switch so we put a little inner request delay in there and that allows us to uh, hold off for a second or a few milliseconds for the radio modem to con to switch back over and we can send the next request out. This uh, keeps us from having a lot of erroneous errors. So for now we're going to leave the timing at the defaults and we're going to click next. Auto demotion. This is specifically for when you have multiple devices on one channel. We just talked about timeouts. Well, if we're trying to request data from a device, I have five devices on the channel. Um, we'll say I have five devices and it takes me 500 milliseconds to get all the data from each device. So because there are five devices dropped on the same channel, we're talking to them synchronously. So we talk to each device one at a time. The total pull cycle for that channel is 2,500 milliseconds or five times 500. If one of those devices becomes disabled and we have to time out on it, then we're adding whatever amount of time it takes for us to fail completely on communicating to that device. At a minimum, three seconds if you just use the defaults for request timeout. So that adds a tremendous amount of time to your poll cycle and you may not you don't want that you want to be able to talk to the other devices if one device fails so this is where auto demotion comes in we can enable auto demotion and we can define how many times we want to fail successively communicating to the device before we demote it from the poll cycle and how long we want it to stay demoted for before we promote it and see if we can establish a connection to the device again so the defaults are three successive failures and 10,000 milliseconds for a demotion period. The last setting in auto demotion is discard rights uh, during the demotion period. And we do that because if you're controlling a device, uh, we'll say you're, you're moving a robotic arm back and forth, and you lose communications with the device, it gets powered down, and someone goes into the center of the device so that they can do some work and it comes back online we don't want to have erroneous rights that are queued up to go to that device all of a sudden make the arm move and hurt somebody so if you discard rights while communications is uh, failed or demoted then you won't get that uh, erroneous movement after it comes back online so I don't want auto demotion so I'm going to disable it and I'm going to click next okay Database creation. This is one of two pages that are for auto tag generation. Not all drivers will create a tag database, and all the drivers work a little differently. So, what this does is it allows us, if we're using auto tag generation, and say we're, we have a Modicon device that we programmed using ConceptSoft or uh, ProWorks. We can export a file from that and import it and create a tag database from the configuration of the device. Now these settings will allow us to determine how we're going to do that creation. Now I'm not going to go over it right now. We'll do that again with another driver and we'll talk about it in detail. So I'm going to just accept the defaults which basically are going to do nothing and click next. The Ethernet page is specific to Ethernet drivers and this page is used to determine the or set the port number that you're going to connect to on the device you're talking to or that you're going to send a message to so uh, and those two things are differentiated by the type of IP protocol that you're using so I'm going to drop down the protocols there's UDP or TCP IP we're going to leave it at TCP IP for the device we're talking to um, but uh, the difference between UDP and TCP IP, UDP is a connectionless state. Uh, 
that means that we send a message out, a UDP message out uh, on the wire, and a device is listening for a message from us being sent to it and its port number. So in a TCP IP uh, protocol, we actually have to establish a socket connection to that device. So uh, it's important to know how the device is configured so that we can set this properly. So we're going to leave the defaults. Port 502 is the default port number for Modbus Ethernet devices. And I'm going to click Next. We're going to accept the defaults on this page. This is specific to the Modbus. This is a custom or special uh, parameter page in the wizard. And other devices will have different pages. So we're going to just accept the defaults and click Next. This is page the custom page 2 for the Modbus device, and we're going to select that. Defaults, click Next. Block sizes. Some drivers allow us to configure the block size, the request size is going to be used to request data from the device. These are the defaults. We're going to leave them at the defaults. Um, we're going to do a, a lesson on optimization later, and you'll want to... Uh, look at that and we're going to discuss block sizes and how uh, different block sizes can optimize or uh, maybe even hurt a device if you set them wrong. So we're going to click next and accept the defaults. This is the second page in the auto tag generation uh, pages and this is where we specify the file that was exported from the configuration software and uh, where it's at so that we can create uh, tags from it. Now, it's very key that you remember that this only works with Concept and ProWorks so, uh, and the new Unity software. So if you have a device that's not a true Modicon device, you're not going to be able to use these uh, import settings. So we're going to leave the defaults which say don't worry about it, we're not looking at a file, and we're going to click Next. So this is the last special page for the Modbus, and this is error handling. And what we do is um, we determine whether or not we want the server to deactivate tags on certain exception codes that are returned by the Modbus device, or if we uncheck check this, it will just invalidate them. The difference between invalidating and deactivating Invalidating, it's only invalid for that poll cycle. And the next time the device is polled, if we get a, a good response, we will validate the data and you'll get good data again. If we deactivate an item, then it is removed from the poll cycle and it's not re added until the client is connected, removes the request for the item, and re adds the request. So uh, this could impact you if you have devices that are reporting erroneous errors. So we're going to leave it at the defaults and I'm going to click next. The device summary page and as we said in the channel this allows us to look at what we set and to go back and make changes if we want to. I'm going to accept all the changes and click finish. So we've now created our new device under our channel and we're ready to move on to part three of our two three-part series in creating a server project.